Well, unlike other U.S. chip equipment suppliers, Applied Materials is more exposed to what we call mature lagging nodes. And so these chips are often used in cars, sensors, and power stations. With lagging node demand still pretty resilient, we saw that with NXP and a few others, the overexposure to that sector could help Applied Materials offset the pullback in capital spending, especially that we've seen within the memory chip space. And I bring that up because recall Micron, was it just a few weeks ago, had its worst quarter in history with over $2 billion dollars and losses over just a three-month period. If they're not making money, they're not buying equipment, and so that hurts equipment makers. But fortunately for applied materials, it's less exposed to memory chips. And the last point I want to make is just about China. It's a very, very important customer to applied materials, and applied materials can still export less advanced equipment to the country. They got the green light, so all positives for the name. Great point, and not I mean, I'm glad you mentioned Micron. It's still up 15% in the past three months, which is amazing. Boris, let me turn to you. What would you do with Amat stock? So you know what else is also an important customer for AMAT? Uh, Taiwan Semiconductor. Hmm. And I think part of the uh, trade in AMAT has been, you know, the, the bet on AI. But having said this, as you see, the stock is really, really rallying to the earnings. So it's kind of, a, to me, a, a dangerous play at this point, because if they do disappoint or if they sort of guide forward cautiously, mo all of their competitors basically got it down. And they have been underperforming everybody else in the industry. So it's kind of hard to, to think that they're going to overperform, um, given the situation as, as it stands. It's really sort of a bet forward on a lot of their technology being supportive of AI. Uh, so to me, I, I'm cautious in front of the earnings. I'd rather wait, hear what they say. If the story is still good, it'll be good afterwards. If it's not, then you probably dodged a bullet a little bit. Are there any semi-names, Boris, that jump out to you here, or do all of them kind of suffer the same fate? They're all pretty much, you know, in the same. I mean, you know, obviously, of course, in, in, Nvidia has been has been the, the semi name that you wanted to go. But um, I think all of them are sort of in this kind of a capital spend cycle right now, where there's a pause, um, and the market has really gotten very excited about AI. And it may have been, I think, as always, overexcited, kind of overreached a little bit at this point. All right, we'll leave it there, Christina. Thank you. Shares up three and a half percent, only about a 20 times forward multiple, by the way. But let's move on to Deer, which blew earnings estimates out of the water back in February. It hiked its full year guidance, increased the dividend by a little more than four percent, and it's got the opposite fate of the chips. Its shares are down 14 percent year to date, nearly nine percent since then. Seema Modi, what's the deal? Yeah, Kelly, sentiment has certainly cooled in recent months. There's been this active debate about whether the agriculture equipment cycle has peaked. Uh, so that's why tomorrow the key focus is going to be inventory levels. Is Deer right now seeing, are they sitting on more inventory than Wall Street is expecting? And is that pushing them to lower the price of their equipment to just get more devices out the door? The other big focus will be the company's technology budget. I spoke to their chief technology officer last month, and he was very confident that the company will continue to put more money into this division, which includes artificial intelligence and robotics. But what I'm hearing from Wall Street is there's generally a bigger focus on a timeline. When do we get to see a full ramp out, a full launch of their robotics equipment? Channeling 2024, is that getting extended because of what we're seeing in the economy? That will, uh, of course, be something they really want more clarity on. North America is still holding up a lot better than overseas. In fact, Brazil has been a weak spot, and you know, Kelly, for the agriculture players, it's a, it's a key market. So that will be something to look out for as well. Great point. The PE Ford multiple under 12. Boris, do you like the stock? I do. I mean, first of all, they're a leader in the act space. Act space is going to be a growth story for a very long time to come. But most importantly, operationally, they're doing very, very well. They're kind of trying to um, move away from a cyclical component of just being up and down on the farm cycle to really evening out the revenue through a lot of smart industrial technology, which is what I call almost software as a product uh, that they're doing. There are a little bit of um, headwinds there because a lot of states are now creating these um, right to repair uh, laws, which could impact um, their contracts going forward. But overall, the fact that they're putting so much value added to all of their products via software, via AI, I think is going to be a very, very powerful thing going forward. And they're going to collect a lot more uh, very high margin revenue. Yeah, I'll take the over on how many times they mention AI in the call. <laughs> I mean, they, they, SEMA has been highlighting for a long time. They have been big on tech, big on all of this. And maybe now is the time to extra highlight that. Uh, SEMA, thank you. Our final stock today is Foot Locker, which is out before the bell tomorrow. Shares are up 11% this year. And we've got the retail reports this week with a bit of, I mean, I'll call it a little bit of a signs of a spending slowdown. Where does that leave Foot Locker? We turn to Courtney Reagan for that answer, Court.
Hi, Kelly. Yeah, so CEO Mary Dillon has only just taken over as of September 1. And so she's looking at this year as more of a reset year because they're doing things like repositioning some of their store banners like Champs. They're optimizing their store fleet, which basically means opening up some, closing some, changing the size of others. They're also looking at cost savings, hiring new executives, reexamining sort of their positioning and their vendor relationship with Nike as Nike tries to move a little bit more direct to consumer and then they reshuffle some of their other brands to pick up that white space. So a little bit of a reset year. We're looking for earnings and revenues to fall fairly sharply year over year. Also look for margins to be a little bit compressed. We heard from Under Armour talking about how they were able to spur sales, but because of offering discounts on their goods. And so that might be a little bit of a clue as to what we might see here.